you go is a walkway through the motor vessel Encore. Especially made for a guy in a wheelchair. My dad lived on this boat for eight years. He's since passed away. We got this door in the back that has no threshold. So you can roll your wheelchair right through there. But when you come inside, come inside. Turn around and you close the door, stepping back. So you can see the door a little further back. It latches down to keep the ocean out. It becomes a watertight seal all the way around this door. All right, take a quick uh, circle around just to show the salon and galley area here. Plenty of room for entertaining guests. The couch pulls out uh, into a double bed. Uh, this table folds down and can go right into the uh, shower room. The windows are low. The passageways are wide. The countertop is low with plenty of room underneath for somebody in a wheelchair. We have a Bosch washing dishwasher that has a stainless steel drum microwave oven that also is a convection oven for real baking. Got a cook stove for your frying pans and saucepans. Nice uh, wide counters for meal preparation or uh, setting out your bait for halibut. Got a nice uh, frigidaire stainless steel refrigerator with the uh, ice and water maker connected. Uh, let's go into the head now. You come in here and you notice uh, that the head has a full-size handicap roll-in wheelchair shower. It's got the, the bars and the handheld head. It's got the fold-down seat. Handicap or non-handicap people can use this, of course. And it's got a rigid shower curtain keeping the water off your floor. Coming over here, we've got the, uh, know, what's the name brand of this? Sealand uh, 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 Aqua Suck flush system. I can't remember it anyway. It's a vacuum that tears it all apart and a holding tank that uh, holds uh, uh, about 100 uh, gallons and uh, also a macerator for pumping it overboard if you're outside the three mile limit. We've got the nice, uh, Vanity here with again room underneath, low counter, nice place to uh, primp. They come over here and we've got the uh, washer and dryer, uh, front load ASCO, and then another ASCO, uh, okay. what do they call this? A convection dryer, clothes dryer. So it doesn't need a vent, uh, it collects the water out of the uh, clothes and uh, sends it overboard. It's really pretty cool. Uh, very effective laundry. Now, if you'll turn around, uh, Miss uh, Camera Person, and pan through the the uh, head. I mean, it's not the head, the stateroom, right? Uh, this fits a couple of people very nicely. This is for the captain, and uh, you can see we've got the hanging locker over here. That's got the automatic light that comes on when you open the door. Let's see in there. Oh, sorry. Here we go. Uh, generous uh, built-in drawers for your clothes. There is an open space here that my father always kept his tools in, so it covers up with a, uh, a window blind that used to be right up against the bulkhead there. But anyway, lots of room for storing stuff up there, keeping it out of sight. Nice uh, windows and another hatch that goes out to the forecastle there. Uh, walk around room all the way around the bed here storage under the bed the bed sits atop the 500 gallon fresh water tank <laughs> for those uh, long excursions uh, come over here and show them the control panel here if uh, I want to see this right here I'm coming. okay good so this is the DC control panel with uh, all of the circuit breakers for the 12 volt system, the AC control panel for all the circuit breakers for 
on 10. And down here is a separate little circuit breaker for everything that can run off of the inverter when you're uh, off the hook and not running the generator. The controls for starting and uh, stopping the generator are here. It's got a 12 and a half kilowatt uh, Northern Lights generator below decks that uh, puts out a whole lot of energy. Mm -hmm. uh, this thermostat runs a Webasto hydronic furnace system that's got five heat registers that uh, deliver heat via hot water. All of the uh, controls for uh, four different automatic bilge pumps are here. Uh, pump out for the tank is here. Your fire suppression system. Uh, everything here is uh, in one place for control. Now I'm going to show, and actually if you would go over there, uh, we're going to go down there later. If you would step over there, I am on the elevator. If you'll pan down and show this little square in the uh, floor is the outline of what's going to be rising up. So you could wheel your wheelchair, whoever, uh, onto this position. It's not a fast elevator, but it's very effective. And it's fast coming down. Yeah, and uh, so you take the trip up into the pilot house. Yes, please kind of pan up and down and show how this is happening. There's a hydraulic ram from a dump truck, actually, underneath this platform, which is raising this up. It's a very basic, standard hydraulic pump that's meant to last forever. Runs off 12 volts. Like I said, it moves you up slowly. And uh, I am rising up into the pilot house. My camera person is now gonna go around and take the stairs and show you uh, what it looks like as I arrive in the pilot house. All right, so this is me arriving in the pilot house. You can see that the ceiling that was above my head continues up and becomes part of the ceiling in this part of the uh, boat. This floor will become part of the floor here. Uh, the hole in the uh, deck down below is, is covered so that your kids don't fall in. <laughs> uh, lots of uh, wide open window space here in the pilot house as it should be. So it shuts us off, itself off when I arrive. If you come through here, you can see that uh, this space here is also a head, a second head with a toilet and sink, a little medicine cabinet. Uh, for anybody who is staying up here in the pilot house, which serves as a second stateroom. So if you spin around, we'll show you the helm. We've got the control panel here for a 40 horsepower get home engine. That's a Yanmar diesel, runs off the same fuel as the rest of the boat. It's got a feathered prop that stays out of the way until you're using it. Uh, it has a grand total of 42 hours on the engine. So it's brand new. When we are running it uh, by itself, just to see how it works, you can make uh, somewhere between three and five knots on that alone. We've got uh, standard radar. Uh, that's an older GPS uh, navigation there that is still completely functional. Uh, all kinds of controls for bow and stern thrusters, which uh, both work. Uh, we've got uh, stabilizers, which uh, keep the side to side motion uh, pretty uh, under control on this boat. There's horn, lights, uh, the fire suppression system. Uh, there is a searchlight up on top that's meant to be remote controlled. Uh, now let's see, uh, full disclosure, the light works, but it does not search. I've got parts for fixing that, but I never got around to fixing it. Uh, heater control, there is a heater up here. Uh, nice big uh, wheel. If you are uh, not in a big heavy wheelchair, there are, show down on here on the floor, there are three connection points for uh, strapping down any uh, chairs that you would like to place here. Lots of storage in the cupboards up under the helm here. We've got some more inverters and uh, drawers underneath. This here is a pretty up-to-date uh, Ray Marine C90W uh, GPS that's uh, got, uh, uh, let's see, Alaska and Canadian charts loaded into it. Uh, it's just a little stand for your own uh, personal computer if you want to have even some more navigational software on your computer. 
Uh, like I said, lots of window space. You got a good view out the front, sides, and back. Let's go towards the back here now, Sarah. You can see there's another uh, couch that makes it into a double bed. Like I said, this is a nice stateroom for visitors upstairs with uh, their own head, their own place to sleep and spread out. You can, you can leave this bed pulled out and still get out the back door uh, when you're underway or when you're on the hook. And uh, uh, also have a party. So let's go out the back door to the boat deck. This is a wonderful place for stargazing. <laughs> Watching fireworks on the 4th of July. Look at that. Look, I'm going, I'm turning. Uh, full, another full disclosure, the tender. This uh, rib here is uh, not part of the offering uh, with this boat. But uh, anytime somebody does have uh, a tender, there's a davit there that's fully functional. It's uh, hydraulic. Uh, runs off the power takeoff comes off the main engine and you can raise up and swing around your tender and lower it down into the water it's really quite handy uh, let's uh, go back inside oh well, you can see that there are uh, uh, deck boxes out here uh, for storing uh, whatever you want to put in all right we're going back in and we'll just show you around the forecastle. We'll step out here front onto the uh, Portuguese bridge. We have a nice little place to be out of the weather right here for a lookout. But uh, further down here on the forecastle, we've got the hatch opens up down to the main stateroom. Got the hydraulic windlass for uh, pulling the anchor. It goes, uh, provides power both up and down. Uh, there's another uh, lazarette down here, which goes to a wide open space. There is a collision bulkhead right here. So the whole front end of the boat could be smashed in and come off and the boat would not sink. Mm -hmm. It's pretty rare to find in a vessel this size. <laughs> Uh, what we use it for is storage of our lunch hook that's got 800 feet of road. Uh, we use that when we're going halibut fishing. Lots of uh, nice high railing around here. Nobody's going to fall overboard. All right, I wanted to show you one other feature up here. Uh, we showed you the uh, elevator, of course. That's one way to get up and down between these two floors. There is a stairway here. It's uh, covered by this uh, gate, which can be locked. I'm going to swing it open to show you that there are stairs that the able-bodied folks can go up and down. It's a, a nice sized hole for somebody to uh, get up and down when they don't want to take the elevator. Next we're going to show you coming down the elevator. Okay, so this is uh, the other half of the camera crew. This is downstairs. This is what it looks like when the elevator is up. You can see the ram there. Um, and when I give the signal, my father will come down on the elevator and it comes down pretty fast. Go! Here he comes. Ta-da! Voila! That's the ride up and down the elevator. Well, we pretty much showed you everything uh, on the inside of this boat except for the uh, engine room, so that will be next. Okay, so access to the engine room is centrally located right here at the bottom of the stairs. Let's take off the hatch. There's uh, steps here for descending, and uh, I have arrived. Next thing you'll see is the engine room. So we're actually in the tank room right now. This is uh, the furthest aft of the below deck space. There are two tanks, uh, each one holding uh, 550 gallons. At least that's the capacity. That's not what's in there now. Uh, there you see the uh, tunnel for the stern uh, thruster. A uh, nice uh, big stainless steel shaft, one of the bilge pumps uh, all the way up here to the engine. So uh, there's space behind the tanks for storage. You can see we use a lot of the space for storage down here. Uh, the area is rather cluttered, but only because we use the boat on a regular basis. Uh, it's uh, not something that is just uh, for display. So I'm going to be turning around and kind of panning through the engine room. Uh, 
Uh, there you see a pump that uh, goes to the heat pump for the uh, air conditioning. Uh, we've got wet mufflers here that come off the main. Another wet muffler that comes off the Yanmar. There's that uh, stunningly new 40 horsepower diesel engine right there, the Yanmar. Uh, if you look over there, you can see the blue blower. Uh, there's the reservoir for the hydraulic fluid. You can see the fire suppression tank up above. The inverter is right behind the tank uh, of the hydraulic fluid. There is a bank of four, a total of four, uh, what do they call those, D-size uh, batteries, a 12-volt AGM, really high-end batteries. Three are the house batteries, and that one is isolated. It's the starting battery. Uh, the Yanmar has its own starting battery. I'm going to swing around and show you all kinds of Raycor filters along the way. Fire suppression again. Uh, and here we have the Northern Lights generator. Three horse, uh, not three horsepower, <laughs> three cylinder diesel uh, generator. It's got about, uh, let's see, 7,000 hours. Uh, but. Uh, in the recent past has had both of its fuel pumps replaced uh, and uh, just runs like a champ. Uh, this uh, mess of hydraulic uh, tubes here and reservoir are the hydraulics that drive the uh, ram for the lift, which is right there. Uh, 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 mounted on a very uh, uh, beefed up uh, part of the hull. Here we have the main Caterpillar engine. It's a V8, uh, I don't, can't remember exactly, 3408, something like that, uh, naturally aspirated uh, 210 horsepower diesel engine with only 1500 hours on it. Uh, we've got the two power takeoffs right down there for the uh, thrusters and the stabilizers stabilizers that's the reservoir and the hydraulics for the NIAD stabilizers very expensive uh, system it's got uh, gyroscopes and the two drivers on either side there's one right behind me uh, of large fins outside that stabilize uh, uh, we got the macerator pump pumping out of the holding tank which is like fiberglassed in right here behind the uh, uh, hydraulics of the stabilizers like I said it's a little uh, cluttered over here but we got a hot water tank back here we've got all of the uh, hoses that uh, pump the uh, uh, black water overboard we got uh, pretty involved filtration system for the water fresh water uh, let me see if you can see it this uh, this white tank right there there are two of them one for each head uh, that uh, is a bit of a capacitor, I suppose, that builds up suction from these uh, pumps here so that when you activate the toilet, uh, everything in the bowl is pretty much vaporized and sucked down into the holding tank. It's a pretty nice system, works very well. Let's see, uh, what else can I tell you? It's well lit down here. And oh, yeah, over here around the other side of me, Right behind me is the furnace, the Webasto furnace. You can see it's got uh, it's got a blower here, a water jacket sleeve where the water comes in uh, uh, the cool side here and the hot side here. Uh, it's pumped by uh, an upgraded oversized pump here and uh, goes to, like I said, five different heat registers throughout the uh, engine, I mean throughout the boat and will keep you toasty warm under any circumstances. Okay, I think that's about it uh, down here. I, I should say all of the electronics are isolated uh, uh, to the ocean and to themselves. Got a lot of uh, isolator uh, switches. You can see one just kind of hiding back there on the wall for each one of the batteries. Each one of the battery banks has its own uh, on and off uh, switch or tying them together. Every engine, one, two, three diesel engines, has uh, a sea strainer and its own sea cock for cooling water. And uh, 
uh, if you have to spend time in an engine room, uh, this is a nice place to be. Uh, quite a bit of space, quite a bit of function. So that's pretty much it. I've showed you every nook and cranny of Encore. It's been a wonderful boat for us. My dad uh, lived independently on it for eight years in a wheelchair. Uh, and the family just had a, a gas. So uh, we're hoping to find uh, the right person to carry on the tradition of exploring, whether it's in Southeast Alaska, the North Pacific Northwest, or anywhere else in the world. Uh, give us a call.